House of the Dragon far exceeded everyone's expectations, and it truly won a permanent place in our hearts. Even though we hate to hear it, we won't have another season for quite a long time. However, this series left a lasting impression, and we have tons of hilarious behind-the-scenes moments and bloopers to prove it. Following the success of Game of Thrones, every actor was enthusiastic to be a part of the prequel House of the Dragon. But what did it take for them to be part of such a massive television production? When I got a call saying that they were making this show that was set 200 years before Game of Thrones, I was really interested. When I got the gig, for that split second, you're like, Oh my God, you're in Game of Thrones, it's the biggest thing ever! And you put the phone down, you're like, Oh God, now I've got to do it. From non-existing dragons, unspoken languages and gigantic sets to a lot of breathtaking locations, House of the Dragon was everywhere and let's say that the cast had a great time travelling. You walk around these sets that look like ancient monuments and buildings with massive statues or you can be on these amazing locations. You cannot believe that this is on the earth somewhere this extraordinary. The set where the series takes place is one of the many shocking things that the cast encounters. We are taken aback as well. It turns out that King's Landing is a life-size set. Reese Ifans, who plays Otto Hightower, said, You read the script at home and you imagine the scenes and then you come in, it's always twice the size you imagined it. Even Emma Darcy, who portrays Rhaenyra, was astonished. First time I walked on set where King's Landing's been built, I I mean, I, I feel that like no one told them that that isn't how films are made now, that you don't have to build the whole castle. One of the most challenging parts of building the sets was the one where the tournaments were filmed. Not only did it need to be suitable for the crowd, but for the horses also. Suddenly we have this huge stadium that we have to fill out. And of course, with all the Covid restrictions, extras only amounted to 150 and we had to look like we had a thousand. There were several issues as a result of having to shoot so many challenging scenes. The production crew nevertheless developed the most creative solutions. Yes, come on. That's the way to do it. And for that, what we do as we're shooting, we're pulling the extras away and we film the sprites from all sorts of different angles with all sorts of different actions. Cheering, crying out, sitting down, standing up, and then we literally populate them like little cards. Although it's fantastic to see that they had the opportunity to design and build the entire set from scratch, some elements couldn't be constructed because they aren't real. Yeah, we're talking about the dragons here. Okay, so now you're getting attacked by the dragon and you have to like scream at this tennis ball. The dragons in the series are enormous. The amount of effort the production team put into creating this series is reflected in the time and effort they went into developing each of the 17 dragons. And we won't even be able to see them all. However, the few that we saw were amazing. Amazing. The relationship between the rider and the dragon was what made the story so magical. Matt Smith, whom you might know better as Daemon Targaryen, believes that his dragon has a lot of similarities with his character. I think kind of Daemon and um, Daemon and Craxes are sort of one entity, really. They're one spirits. They're sort of avatars of one another. They're both just grumpy and moody. Mm. So I do think there's a nap there's a kind of weird symbiotic sort of molecular thing that goes on. The pride these dragon riders have helped them a lot to get into character. Leo Ashton, who portrays young Emmon Targaryen, really enjoyed his journey to claim his dragon, or steal it in this case. Going on to set. Dragon riders again. The first day was quite hard and the next day I came in, I felt so much power and I was like, I need to get this as well as I can. Emmond and his sworn enemy, Lucerys Valerian, seem to enjoy each other's presence off the screen. The two are close in age and maybe their friendship helped them a lot while filming. And three, two, two, one, and action! The young Lucerys is portrayed by Harvey Sadler, and since it's the biggest show he's ever been in, he made sure to enjoy the most out of it. Check out this video with his best and cutest moments from the set, including where he took Emmon's eye and the way he tosses the knife after. Well, after that scene, everything kind of went downhill. The next thing we knew was that the king's condition was worsening with each day. But Paddy Considine's humour, however, was just getting better and better. In the scenes where King Viserys was struggling to walk, behind them, Paddy was dancing, singing and cheering everyone up. What came as a shock, though, was that Paddy might have mistaken his profession. It turns out he is quite fond of music. He was singing on his deathbed. Give me your hand. 
Not only that, but it appears that he loves playing the guitar as well. All throughout the filming of season one, he was finding different guitar lookalikes so that he could jam to... and... And there's no need to describe anything for when he found a real one. The great King Viserys of House of Targaryen is quite the impressionist as well. When he tripped on some of the stairs, he quickly pulled it off with a little dancey dance so that no one noticed. He left a lot of fond memories for us and the rest of the cast despite the short time that he was on the show. While Viserys enjoyed his little dances around the set with his wife, well, the young version of his wife really liked her pregnancy journey. It's not surprising that Emily Carey, who plays Alison, found it so fascinating given her young age. And this is the reason she took tons of selfies with her baby bump. Emily Carey enjoys wearing fashionable clothes and a lot of jewellery. And with just a brief glance at the series, you can see that their outfits are really breathtaking. The colours match their personality and the details are everything. Well, it looks like young Alison isn't that trustworthy. We kind of knew it with her manipulation in the series and the stuff going on there. But she's unreliable off the screen too? Hate to break it to you, but yes, she admitted it herself by posting this photo where she said, and here is me wearing a bib because I can't be trusted. It was pretty easy peasy for her even with all of that skepticism and those rapidly growing bumps one after the other. The hard part for her was sitting still in a carriage with her bestie Millie Alcock. Even though the two grow up to be rivals in the show, in real life they kept their relationship as it was at the beginning of the series. A kind and loving friendship. Emily and Millie were each other's biggest supporters, and they even decided to rule Westeros together, the ending everyone wished for. Well, we didn't get it, so we had to move on. Millie and Emily's friendship wasn't the only one that arose in the series. Young Rhaenyra and her first love interest Sir Kristen Cole hid it off behind the scenes too. From their passion for fashion to smoking cigarettes in between the sets, these two were quite fond of one another. The two described the first time they met, and it was just extremely cute. We meet in the first episode. We meet in the first episode. I ask for your favor. Yes, my favor. And you give it to and me. And then I give it to and you. And you throw it down. And and I throw it's, it's, really it's cute. cute. It's, it's like a little meet cute. It's a meet cute. She's only like 14 in that world, <laughs> <Yeah. time>, though. <laughs> we don't, we don't, you we don't condone that. Creep. I know it is a bit. It is that world, though. It's not me. I wouldn't. No, I mean I wouldn't. No. <laughs> but um, um, I think I think that people will be rooting for for, for our, us. For our help. It's unfortunate that their friendship didn't last throughout the series, but let's face it, Rhaenyra and Daemon are far superior. Let's not get to that just now, because their rivalry has been going on for quite some time now. Maybe the cause is their precious Rhaenyra, or the fact that Daemon always gets what he wants. Nevertheless, we'll leave that for another time. Kristen had a lot of fun behind the scenes of House of the Dragon, and it looks like he likes to dance and sleep. Maybe wearing that heavy and shiny armor really makes you tired. However, when he did take off his armor, he couldn't wait to start dancing around with his friend Millie. Or he danced with anyone really. Everyone who was free at the moment became Fabian Frankel's dance partner. Oh, we haven't said a lot about Matt Smith, have we? It's for sure that he likes to avoid being caught off guard, which is why he usually maintains a high level of caution. Besides his openly shared hatred towards his wig, there isn't much more to say beyond what he told us. I think they can find out what they want to find out on the internet about <laughs> Damon Targaryen. It's there for all to see, and it's just it's just my take on it, really. He's a slightly sort of um, slightly sort of different creature. To, to most of them, I think. Well, we can't really find the relationship that Damon has with his daughters because it was deleted. It would have been so heartwarming to see Damon as a loving father figure, but we weren't that lucky. I guess the writers want us to suffer in pain. Damon's now partner, Renera, is quite the same, actually. They like to keep their guard up as well. But given that Emma believes that they have a lot in common with their roles, personality traits, they like to share their opinion, unlike Matt. He's someone who I think is at odds with her gender as a result of the position she finds herself in. Yeah, I suppose I'm interested in like all gender questions. So yeah, you have someone whose womanhood is at odds with the role that they've been awarded. And they have remarkably different opinions on wigs as well. I love wearing a wig, it turns out, which- Do you? I do actually. It's, so it's just It's just so transformative. It's an air look. Like I arrive at work, I don't have to come as the person. If you're afraid we forgot the queen, literally, no we didn't. Olivia Cook appears to be the type of person that enjoys everyone's presence. She's just a ray of sunshine on rainy 
days. However, she mostly likes to spend her time with her enemy, Emma Darcy. The two really took over all our social media explaining their drink of choice, and the bars must have had a hard time preparing it. Negroni. I was going to say the same thing. Magliato. Mmm. Yeah. With Prosecco in it. And now, what's making it to the headlines is Olivia's best meal recipe. What's a meal that you excel at making? An Italian sausage, <laughs> mascarpone, yeah. pasta. Yeah. Have me over. I will. I will. Have to be me. Oh, it would be great if you had us over, Olivia. Oh, we'd love it. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.